for you too on the handout. Area of surface of revolution. There we go. <clears throat> In whatever sections it was, it's changed now. The volumes of the solid generated by rotating a function's graph about an axis. Uh, yeah, that's where we talked about this method and washer method. We did that. We found volumes. Now we're going to find surface area using a little formula. It's a little different. Okay, but the process is the same. Remember, what we did is we took our curve and we uh, rotated about an axis, in this case about the x-axis, and so <clears throat> this is sort of the shape we get, the solid we get. However, I'm not interested in the volume of that, I'm interested in that surface area that is created here. <clears throat> not the two ends, but the surface area of this bell shape here, the outside. What area does that have, if I laid it out flat, if you will? That's what we're looking at, surface area. Yeah, there's probably better diagrams in the book. But the, <clears throat> the formula we're going to use for surface area comes from the surface area of the uh, frustrum of a cone, which just means kind of the cone chopped off, the top part chopped off. <clears throat> well, the thing is on the frustrum of the cone, you've got two measurements you need, uh, well, as far as the radii are concerned. You need the radius of the top part and you need the radius of the bottom part. And then you also need that length, the uh, slant height, it's called L. <clears throat> well, it turns out the volume is, uh, well, the way we'll use it, <clears throat> turn it over, is you take pi times that radius plus the two radiuses added together, the sum of the two radii, radiuses, add those two together, multiply it by the length. That gives you surface area of the frustrum. It's called. Probably haven't done many of those, but that's what it is, okay? All right, so how does that come into play? Well, if we divide up our, divide up our uh, curve into three, I did three. Didn't want to draw too many of those, but rotate those then. <clears throat> rotate those. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm not uh, yeah. So I'm <clears throat> rotating those about my uh, x-axis there, and so I get up get these. Uh, so these are cones. Yeah, I'm cutting those off. That's where the kind of going to use the arc length here. So I'm just drawing those where, where these create these frustrums, these parts of cones, you see. <clears throat> okay, so divide that up, rough sketch, yeah, pretty rough. I get these three bands. And so the surface area of these three bands would roughly approximate the area surface area of that original figure, right? You with me there? Maybe, sort of? So if I add up all three of those, but here's, let's do uh, the first one. S1 is the area of the first one. Well, <clears throat> looking back, I've kind of got it off screen there now, but the pi, the radii here, aren't those the function values? That's the height here at 1, uh, x sub 0. That's radius 1, if you will. Radius 2 would be the height at x sub 1, the function value, in other words, at x sub 1, or whatever uh, whatever uh, sample point you want to take it there. <clears throat> That's where the star comes from. But Now, the uh, <clears throat> L, which is this slant height, do you see that comes in, that is the distance between the points, isn't it? And <clears throat> um, ultimately it will get it to the arc length. X of I is some value between X of 0 and X of 1. You can use midpoints. You can use uh, 
left points, right end points, whatever the case may be there. L is the arc length. So yeah, L is just the arc length there. Okay. <clears throat> Which from previous work we just figured that out. So long story short here, here's what we got. S sub 1 is, take that arc length times 2x sub uh, 1 star. So yeah, we're just going to uh, use the same function value for both. <clears throat> Put all that together. So it winds up being 2 pi f of x sub i star, square root, the arc length stuff, times delta x. The true surface area is approximately the sum of those three. So we had three frustrums while ago. The sur real surface area is approximately that. How could we do better? Well, we could do four. We could do a hundred. We could do a thousand. How could we get it exactly? If we ran in to infinity, what do we get? That's then the integral. Limit as n goes to infinity of this stuff. It's the integral of two pi f of x. 1 plus f prime of x sub i squared, delta x is dx. Here it is. Surface area of, circle this one. Surface area of a s solid generated by rotating about an axis, or the x-axis, I guess this is, it is, from a to b, is 2 pi f of x, square root, now this, this is the uh, arc length, the arc length formula, dx. That's how we get surface area. <clears throat> now this, uh, note this one does use both f of x and f prime of x. So the, the two are different there. This is f of x, that is f prime of x. Just some notes there about, uh, about the curve. All right? No problem, right? Just a formula. Another formula to uh, to know about. <clears throat> Turn this off first. Okay, so let's let's apply that formula then. Not that. There we go. <clears throat> to these then. All right, number one, <clears throat> find the surface area problem. Find the area of the surface obtained by rotating y equals <clears throat> the square root of 4 minus x squared, negative 1 to positive 1, about the x-axis. <clears throat> All right, so just like before, we, we are going to need the derivative, so let's uh, take care of that right out of the box here. So that would be the derivative. Well, that's uh, 4 minus x squared to the 1 half. So that would be 1 half, 4 minus x squared, to the minus a half, but don't forget chain rule, multiply that by negative 2x, derivative of the inside, which, again, cancel, cancel, so that, let's write that again, sort of the same deal we had a while ago, um, <clears throat> minus x over square root of 4 minus x squared. Minus x over 4. That's the derivative. So the surface area then is, well, it was the integral from a to b, negative 1 to positive 1, 2 pi f of x. What's my f of x? Square root of 4 minus x squared. It's just the uh, function there. Times the arc length, 1 plus 
negative x, the derivative squared, so it'll be negative x over square root of 4 minus x squared, squared dx. <clears throat> okay, so that is negative 1 to 1, 2 pi, square root of 4 minus x squared, and the big thing is getting this right here. That would be 1 plus x squared, 4 minus x squared, square negative x, you get x squared, square, square root of 4 minus x squared, you get 4 minus x squared. Well, same thing here, go ahead and um, it's going to work out really nicely because if we get a common denominator, don't I get Yes, equals the integral negative 1 to 1, 2 pi, square root of 4 minus x squared. Uh, common denominator, so I have 4 minus x squared over 4 minus x squared plus the x squared over 4 minus x squared. It's going to work out nicely because the x squareds go out, so I'll just have 4 over 4 minus x squared dx. write it that way. So I'll wind up with just 4 over 4 minus x squared in the square root, but if I split those out, nice things happen. 4 minus x squared is cancel. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> and square root of 4 is just 4, I mean 2, square root of 4 is 2, so I have 4 pi. What's the uh, integral of 4 pi, negative 1 dx? Negative 1 to positive 1, 4 pi dx. Well, 4 pi is just a constant, so the antiderivative is 4 pi x. So I want to run that from negative 1 to positive 1. So that would be 4 pi, at, uh, 4 pi times 1 is 4 minus 4 pi times negative 1. Negative, negative, make a positive, so it's 4 pi plus 4 pi, isn't it? 8 pi. Which, again, you can check this one because that is semicircle rotated about the x axis. That's a sphere. Surface area of sphere is radius 2. Surface area of sphere is 4 pi r. 4 pi times the radius, the radius here is 2, so 4 pi times 2 is 8 pi. There you go. All right, but <clears throat> let's do another. How many was it? Yeah. All right, so this one doesn't quite work out that way, so let's do this one. Is that okay? Question or concern? Okay, find the surface area. Find the area of the surface. <clears throat> Obtained by rotating. Y equals X cubed over 9. 0 less than or equal to X less than or equal to 2. About the x-axis. <clears throat> Alright, <clears throat> so here, what's my derivative here? Well, that would just be 1 ninth. Derivative of x cubed would be 3x squared, so it's one third x squared would be my derivative. Well, let's see what uh, comes about with that. So the surface area would be the integral of a to b, 0 to 2, 
2 pi f of x, f of x is x cubed over 9, times <coughs> the square root of 1 plus f prime of x, so that would be the 1 third x squared squared dx. Okay, so that is 0 to 2, 2 pi, x cubed over 9. Simplify this out a bit, that would be 1 plus 1 ninth x to the 4th dx. Then it becomes, how do I do that integral? <laughs> how am I going to do that integral? This one's not too bad, which usually means u substitution. Yeah, can, do you see here I can do a u substitution because if I let u be this, du then is 1 ninth 4 x cubed dx or 4 ninths x cubed dx. So divide off the 4 ninths x cubed. See how that's going to work out pretty well? Because that x cubed will cancel with that other x cubed. That'll get rid of all my x's. So I'll have a nice just u thing. <coughs> so if I do that, what do I got? I've got the integral 0 to 2, 2 pi x cubed over 9 times square root of u and then du, this is, uh, <clears throat> that would just be, uh, well, we'll talk about it. But the good news is that x cubed cancels with that x cubed. What else happens? Well, divide by 4 ninths means uh, 9, do the reciprocal, that would be 9 fourths. So let's take care of that, all that business. So we've got 2 ninths. Then I'll have this 1 9th, that'll be 9 fourths. Or do you have dx? Or do you have du? <coughs> the 9's cancel. 2 goes into 4, so I wind up with just pi over 2, square root of u, du. Those are the x's. The x limits. It all works out, because all the x's are gone. Now I'll just have our constants and u's. u to the 1 half is the square root of u. So my antiderivative, I have pi over 2 times uh, u to the 1 half, so I'll get 3 halves. Divide uh, up here, so 2 thirds. Do the limit, so it'd be, uh, oh, 2's cancel, so it'd be pi over 3. U is 1 plus 1 ninth x to the 4th. So that's why I'm going to run 0 to 2. Let's see if you got that. Okay. All right, so 0 to 2. Plug in the 2. I'll have pi over 3. 1 plus 1 ninth times 16. So that's 1 plus 16 ninths. And then minus, plug in the 0. 1 plus 0, so that would just be 1. Pi over 3. 
Mm, I believe that's 25 ninths. So pi over 3 times 25 ninths. Minus pi over 3. Well, we can figure out what all that works out. It's 25 twenty-sevenths pi. And that would be 9 twenty-sevenths pi. So I'm seeing that is final 16 pi over 27. <clears throat> Did we get something? Uh, three halves. Did I forget the half power? Yeah, sure did. Ah, all right. So let's back up. Forget that. That was too easy. All right. Yes, I did. Forgot that again. It's u to the three halves. So that fourth power is not enough. I need the three halves power. <laughs> okay. There we go. So that would mean 1 plus 16 ninths to the 3 halves. 1 to the 3 halves, which that's still going to be minus pi over 3. So this is pi over 3. And that's 25 ninths to the 3 halves. So just need that 3 halves power. Uh, and that's pi over 3. Thank you for finding that. Uh, <coughs> which is a pretty good answer. You can probably get some uh, other answers there, but I'm okay with that. Because you can do the three halves, the it would be the square root of 25. Oh, well that's going to work out pretty good. Oh yeah, let's do some more. Uh, <coughs> that's why I chose those four nights there, I think. Well here, here's what we can do. That means the square root pi over 3 times the square root of 25 ninths cubed minus pi over 3. Doesn't it? 3 has power means square root, so square root your 25, square root your, that's 5 over 3 cubed. Well, 5 cubed is 125, 3 cubed is, one, one, is 27, so I have pi over 3 times 125 over 27. Which, work all that out, be 125 over 81, minus 1 third, which works out to be 98 over 81. else with that? Pi? I believe so. 98 over 81 pi. So yeah, you get some interesting numbers, uh, run into some interesting numbers here. I mean, they, I tried to pick out here one that was actually pretty nice, and you still run into three halves powers and 